Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Amy Howard Art. If you're new around here, I'm Amy and I create art using coloured pencils. In today's video I'm going to walk you through the steps I took to draw this cutie little blue tit. Before that though, if you want to draw along with this tutorial then the reference image is listed in the description along with all of the materials that I've used and you can also find the full tutorial in real time over on my website tutorial subscriptions and I will leave the link for that below in the description for you guys. So let's get straight into this blue tip and I actually started in a different place than the eyes. I know that is completely peculiar for me but there we go. So I started with the top of his head, first of all going in with a light layer of warm grey one from the Polychromos and I'm working in the direction that the feathers are going in. I then went directly over that with a light layer of light ultramarine again from the Polychromos, working the pencil in exactly the same way using that really light pressure and working back and forth in a light shading motion in the direction that the feathers are going. That is really important when you are building feathers and fur and that kind of texture. Once I built up enough of that light blue colour by going over a couple times, I then started to add in the darker blue tones and I went in using the cobalt blue and the dark indigo from the Polychromos and I made sure that I only concentrated those colours where the feathers were darkest. Once I'd done that, I then continued to add a base layer of the warm grey one up to and around the eye of the bird and then I start to pencil in that really tiny little peeper. So I used a sharp dark sepia polychromos pencil for this and I went around and gently outlined the shape of the eye before I went in and lightly shaded within it to flesh out the form. I make sure not to add any colour to the highlighted areas within the eye which I can see on the reference as well. And I pretty much only use this colour to build the eye as it's pretty black and beady. But later on I do go over and add a few blue tones so I add in some dark indigo and I also add in a little bit of burnt sienna just to give it a little bit more life. I then start to add in that band of colour around the eyes which I like to call the mask or the bird's goggles. I add this in exactly the same way as the top of the head, starting off with that warm grey one and then building those light blue tones all the way to the darkest. And I'm remembering to work in the direction of the feathers and to use that really light hand to layer the pencil down. The white toned feathers around the face are built by layering some more warm grey ones so I've added that initial base layer and then I'm going in with a sharp warm grey one and just adding in another layer and then building in some warm grey three and a little bit of the earth green as well and those are again all polychromos colours. I then also continue to add that blue band which goes around the bird's neck and just continuing to layer the warm grey one and then building the blues from the lightest to the darkest to add in that final band around there. The back of the blue tit is where I laid down some yellow brown tones and I mixed them with the light ultramarine to create a really unique green colour. So I started off with that base of the warm grey one and then I built in some olive brown 10%, that one's from the Caran d'Ache Luminance range and then I went over with the light ultramarine polychromos pencil making sure to just touch the paper and barely put any pressure through the pencil. I then layered some more of that olive brown 10% and I continued to layer and build those two colours until I had this really very pale greeny brown colour which mimicked the reference image. To create a little bit of luminosity I added in some cobalt green from the Polychromos just to really enhance that green nature of those feathers. There were also some really yellow goldy hints here and there and I had the perfect colour in my Polychromos arsenal of green gold and I added hints of this here and there again just to enhance that luminosity of the bird's feathers. The light played a key role in this piece and I kept the very left hand side of the bird quite bright and unsaturated with these brighter pencils. So I added fewer layers to the left hand side but not as many as I did to the right hand side. So the right hand side I added far more layers and I kept knocking back the colour every now and then on the left hand side with a layer of the Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil. 
and then continued to just really slowly build some of those tones using that light ultramarine, that olive brown 10% and using a few of the darker blue colours and a little bit of that cobalt green. And then I finally went through and added some feather texture using the Luminance Prussian Blue and I made really tiny little lines going in the direction of the feathers and a sharp pencil is key here to keeping those lines nice and crisp and precise. I then turned my attention to the breast of the bird and fleshed that out with a base layer of that olive brown 10%. The feathers here are yellow in tone and this makes the perfect base for yellow tones. I then blended that out with the white pencil to create a really nice smooth slick surface to build some texture and tone and I went through again with that green gold and added in more of these saturated colour areas. I also went through and added some olive green yellowish to the more shadowed areas. Those were situated underneath the wing and towards the tail of the bird, so the very underneath of him. I used a gentle shading motion to add this down to limit the amount of pigment and the intensity of the colour. So I just used a really light hand, just barely putting anything down on the paper at all. I then followed that with some earth green and some more of that green gold to complete the breast of the bird. I then moved on to the wings to complete the blue tip and I started off by adding in all of those dark areas with a dark indigo pencil, making sure that it's really nice and sharp to get those really nice precise lines, especially around the edges of the feathers. I then added a base layer of the warm grey one over the entire wing area and then I started to build those blue tones again as I did with the head and the blue tones through the face. I started with the lightest blue of the light ultramarine and then I continued to build the darker areas by shading really lightly with some dark indigo and then blending out with the white and the warm grey three pencils. I built up the blue tones by adding down some cobalt blue, some grey blue, cobalt green and blended them together with the white to create a really nice smooth effect. Whilst I was layering these colours I kept a really light hand and really took my time by analysing the piece and looking at the shapes, the tones, the textures, everything that was going on within the reference photo. Patience is key when it comes to colour pencil, especially when you're working with an unfamiliar texture like this. That is, if you aren't used to drawing birds, of course. The right hand wing and the side of the bird was a lot darker, so I overlaid a lot more of the dark indigo and the darker blues on that side. Again, this is just to help with that play of light. The left hand side was a lot lighter, so obviously I didn't concentrate any of those darker colours. The darker colours were concentrated onto the right hand side. The tail feathers were rendered in exactly the same way by lightly layering the base of the warm grey one, then building up the blues and the greens from the lightest to the darkest and blending and smoothing with the white and grey pencils when necessary. It's pretty straightforward. So with work on the blue tick complete, I then turned my attention to the branch he was perched on. And I'm not going to go into too much detail with this portion of the tutorial as I am creating a whole other tutorial devoted to recreating this texture, which will be so much more useful to you guys as I know a lot of you struggle with these types of textures. So I started off by layering my lovely warm grey one pencil and making tiny little circles as, as I layer this down. And I do this so that I can feel as much of the tooth of the paper as possible and since there's no fur direction or anything to the branch, layering in this way actually gives a really nice smooth even result. I then map in all of the dark grooves and knots of the branch using a warm grey 3 pencil before going over with some dark sepia, some cap at mottom violet and some burnt sienna. Once those are in I then start to build the tones and qualities of the branch, again as always working from my lightest to my darkest colour making sure that I only add the darker tones where they are actually needed. So I'm really paying attention to the reference photo and the way that the light plays on the reference photo. 
sharp pencils and burnishing with the white pencil is how I managed to create the texture and sometimes smooth look of the branch. So gentle layering with the pencils instead of going in with hard pressure is key here. Gently layering your pencils and having patience with them enables you to build a much nicer tone and result. The colours I used in this branch are Burnt Sienna, Caput Morton Violet, Raw Umber, Olive Green, Yellowish and Burnt Sienna. All of those are from the Polychromos, apart from that Burnt Sienna 10%. When drawing this kind of texture, it's important to analyse the light direction as this is key to it looking three dimensional. So the underside of my branch is the darkest area, so I make sure that I constantly shade this area darker than the rest and I often take a big step back and a long look to make sure that the contrasts are translated correctly. To build those really light green colours, I gently layered down the olive green yellowish and then I blended with the white and I added a tiny little bit of that green gold to achieve that kind of really yellowy green look. As I said, I'm going to devote a whole tutorial specifically to creating this texture using a few different drawings that I have done in the past, which is going to really help you guys a lot more. So that's pretty much all I have for you with this tutorial. Remember that if you do want to follow along in real time and create this little cutie, the full tutorial with voiceover is available for my website subscribers. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I would love to know what you would like to see me draw in the future. Do you like to see me draw cute wildlife and textures like this blue tit or would you like to see something different like a snake or a fish or something really unusual? Let me know in the comments below of what you would like to see. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new around here, why not hit that subscribe button and delve into all things coloured pencil. I post new videos every single Friday to help you guys and I also live stream occasionally too. But anyway guys, I will see you next week. Bye!